The 18 Strong Podcast, episode number 317 with Jake Hutt from Jake Hutt Golf and Drivebox. What's up, guys? Welcome to the 18 Strong Podcast, where we know the stronger we are, the better we play. I'm Jeff Pelizero. I'm your host, and I am super excited to have you here once again, where we are more than just a golf and fitness podcast. See, our goal here at 18 Strong is to do one of three things each and every episode, and that's to, in one way, shape, or form, either educate, entertain, or inspire you to get stronger in some fashion. Sometimes that's going to be talking about golf. Sometimes that's going to be talking about fitness and nutrition as it relates to just your lifestyle or your golf game. Sometimes it's going to have to do more with mindset and success. But whatever it is, the intent is that we all walk away better than when we showed up and we have more fun on the golf course the next time we get out there because of the work that we put in and because of the information or experience or whatever it is that we get out of each and every guest. And the way that we do this is simply by bringing on cool people like this week's guest, Jake Hutt from Jake Hutt Golf and Drivebox. See, Jake was a hockey player growing up, played a lot of golf growing up, but primarily was a hockey player through his high school, college, junior hockey years, was also a musician, and then turned into a teaching pro, golf instructor. But Jake is doing it differently than anyone else out there, and that's why he's exploding on social media right now, and his content is just being consumed by the masses over and over and over again. Now, we here at 18 Strong, we love Jake because much like us, he wants to grow the game, but he wants to break down the notion that the game has to be stealthy and serious all the time. And you're going to see that in the interview. You're going to see that in his content. So between flat bill caps, long hair, his instruction videos that are really more like freestyle raps, Jake is killing it when it comes to creating content that's not only helping a lot of golfers that are out there, but it's definitely entertaining them as well. So in this episode, we're going to talk about how he first got into teaching. We're going to talk a little bit about his hockey career. Uh, We're going to also discuss major swing changes that he made in his own personal game when he was first starting out and really the learning process that that he went through to teach himself, but also to then be able to teach guys like you and me. And then we're going to talk about this brand new concept of bringing the driving range to you, which is his new company called Drivebox, where they literally have a big trailer with a a simulator track man inside the back, and they will come to you to do golf lessons, parties, all that kind of stuff where you can play golf with your buddies. It's kind of crazy. So immediately after listening to this episode or watching this episode, wherever you're finding this, I want you to go to Jake's Instagram account. Jake, it's at Jake Hutt Golf. And also at Drivebox. And Drivebox is spelt with a Y. D-R-Y-V-E-B-O-X. And I want you to check him out. I want you to be sure to follow him. Look at all of his stuff. Share some of his stuff. You're going to love seeing some of the, the videos, the freestyle raps and things that he does to really teach different lessons and different things in the golf swing. And of course, while you're over there, make sure you follow 18 Strong and me personally eight, at 18 Strong Jeff. And be sure to uh, to follow, like, subscribe, do all that good stuff, especially for the podcast over on iTunes and all that. There's two ways that this podcast really grows. It's by you guys doing that stuff, subscribing and, and leaving reviews over on iTunes, as well as just telling your friends, telling your buddies about you know what 18 Strong is all about. And we're getting a lot of emails, we're getting a lot of messages from new listeners, and we know that that's coming from all of you in the 18 Strong crew. And so I, I want to say thank you and really appreciate you guys doing that. Let's continue to push forward and move this mission further ahead. All right, let's get into our interview with Jake Hutt from Jake Hutt Golf and Drybox. Jake Hutt, welcome to the 18 Strong Podcast, brother. Thanks so much for having me. Super stoked to be on, big fan. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, man, I, I've been kind of geeking out on your Instagram stuff for a while now and, and watching, you know, all the the unique things that you do, the way that you're teaching. But I, before we get into the golf stuff and all that, um, I know you got a, a hockey background. So I want to hear a little bit about your hockey career and uh, where that took you and then kind of when the transition happened. Yeah, so, I mean, I grew up in... Uh... I grew up in Menlo Park, not a, not exactly a hockey hotbed, but my uh, my mom's side of the family is all from northern Minnesota. My cousins all played, um, and we've got a place up there in uh, on Pelican Lake. So just grew up, um, you know, hanging around them, wanting to be a hockey player. And so I 
there were there was enough enough hockey out here in the in the Bay Area for me to, you know, I kind of went and did the uh, you play peewees, you play squirts, pe- squirts, peewees, bantams, all that. Um, then I played AAA for the Junior Sharks, um, and uh, so we were traveling every weekend. That was when I was uh, in high school. You know, we'd go off to tournaments in Colorado, uh, Chicago. We were everywhere. Um, it was you know it was kind of a big pain in the ass, obviously, in California having to go to all these other places. So it was tough to keep up with that in school, but obviously I loved it and um, ended up playing junior hockey for three years out in the, the North American League and uh, started in Santa Fe um, for the Topeka, or sorry, the Santa Fe Roadrunners, and then the team moved to Topeka, Kansas. I was in Topeka, Kansas um, for two years, and then that ended, uh, kind of took a year off, and then um, made a few last-minute phone calls, ended up at uh, Curry College in uh, Boston, transferred midway through my second semester to Salve Regina in Rhode Island. And uh, that's kind of, in the summer times, all the guys would stay and party in Newport. Uh, one of the head pros there was uh, was also a hockey guy, so we'd all work at the golf course. And that's kind of where I, kind of talking to the to the pro there, we became really close. He became a good friend of mine, um, still a really good friend of mine. And uh, he kind of introduced uh, the fact that you could be a PGA pro, what that looked like. So um, I joined the PGA, uh, the I got my class A, I guess, so, you know, started that whole process, which took about another four years. So, um, yeah, that's kind of hot. I, I was 25 when I stopped playing. That's when I really started kind of committing, committing to golf and just obsessing over the, you know, reading everything and studying it and researching it and going out and trying it. And I, uh, I did my apprenticeship at Stanford University, so I taught there and kind of learned from everyone there for about six years. And, uh, and now I'm, I'm here. So... Was that the introduction of you to golf when you were out playing playing hockey at you know mid mid to early twenties? It was. I mean, I, I grew up playing. Um, you I did, was okay. A golfer, and uh, and so I I probably broke an eighty. I think I broke eighty when I was fifteen or sixteen. You know, never had any golf lesson. Just went out and screwed around. Um, but I mean, you know, definitely definitely played. Parents would drop me off in the morning. I'd you know play all day in the summer times when I wasn't. Uh, doing hockey stuff but uh it, it was kind of like my reintroduction um to to golf and watching everyone have so much fun all the guys obviously we all played we were all super competitive with it and um that was where i was just like wow this is awesome i could you know see myself possibly having a career doing this and so that's kind of yeah where, where the spark happened so to speak I've always been fascinated with the the junior hockey stuff. So um here in St. Louis uh years ago I started a uh uh, performance center with my buddy and he worked with a lot of professional hockey players a lot of junior hockey players we had other coaches working with other athletes and um, you know you get all these young guys playing hockey and just like you traveling all over the place you know they're they're playing super high level they're playing all the time they're practicing all the time and then at like after high school or mid high school they go play junior hockey it was always a weird path to me you go play junior yep. hockey and and then, you know, most of them realize, like, hey, I'm not going to be a professional hockey player at that point, but they keep playing, and then, then they go to college. It's like, at, yeah. when, you're, when you're playing junior hockey, were your aspirations, like, I want to be a professional hockey player, or were your aspirations, I want to go play hockey in college? It's always been interesting to me. Oh, yeah, I always wanted to play in the NHL. That was, that was always my dream. Um, and... Uh, yeah, it is a super interesting path. I mean, for me, thank God, I definitely needed a few years off after high school, um, before college, um, to you know figure things out. And so, I mean, those are just the funnest years ever. Uh, you're just you're living in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And you've got you know we were getting in Topeka, we were getting you know three four thousand fans a game. You're signing autographs and you feel like a big shot. And it's just awesome. You know, you're you're not wearing face masks. You're fighting and it's just you know you're traveling you're playing what is it like 60 60 something games a year and um flying to places but i shouldn't say flying to places we obviously we flew to alaska a few times and um played up in uh where was it? i can't remember where it is way up north like just, you see some some wild places it's just a trip looking back on it just a blast yeah i mean it, it's like you're it's kind of like you're playing in the big leagues. You know, you don't have school. You don't have anything. I mean, but you're broke as can be. You're living with a, a billet family or whatever. And, yep. Uh, uh, it's just always always fascinated me. The uh, and then, uh, are you a Letterkenny fan? Do you watch the show Letterkenny at all? I do. Yeah, they're hysterical. Yeah. Oh my god! I, after seeing the hockey 
crowd, you know, seeing the guys and then watching that show, it's just, it has become one of my favorites. It's Classic. like, like our second vernacular here. Um, all right. So you, so you, then you transfer in, into working with golf, you get, how did, how did the Stanford thing come about? How'd you end up with the, the apprenticeship there? So, yeah, I mean, I, I just, I grew up in Menlo Park, um, which is right down the street from Stanford. I just had, I want to say it was a mutual connection, a uh, friend of a friend worked there and I just started working the shop, you know, checking people in. Um, at first, and then once I started the uh, the apprenticeship, the you know, past qualifying test and the playing test and all that, then um, started to become a little bit more involved in the operation and teaching rec classes and um, starting my own business there, teaching uh, as an independent contractor and uh, just you know learning and getting the reps in and giving all sorts of awful lessons and learning and just you know trying to trying to figure it out. All right, man. So now you're you're teaching different golfers. What about your game? Did you start playing competitively? Uh, start working on your own game a lot more too. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I one of my favorite parts of, of what I do is you, you get to go out and experiment with all these different concepts. And I'm always I'm constantly experimenting and playing around with uh, the things that I'm studying to see if it works and you know figure out how to explain it. Just constantly toying with things and um, that you know isn't exactly good for your golf game when you're constantly experimenting with stuff um it, you know you go down a lot of a lot of rabbit holes and some of those end up better than others um but uh i would say yeah my goal has always been to you know selfishly get as good as i possibly can uh, and just as much information and, and be a great teacher be a great player um and but i would say yeah i, I never had the the intent to go pro or, or to play for golf for a living. I knew that wasn't a possibility. Um, but the teaching side and getting creative with, you know, I love music and video editing and all that stuff. Um, the, uh, the teaching side was just, uh, I always knew that that's the route that I wanted to go down. I want to dig into what you said there about, you know, going down all these different rabbit holes and, and learning as much as you can. Um, because I think that any great coach is, is like that, you know, where you're trying to absorb, as much information as possible. First of all, who were some of the guys or some of the organizations that you really started to dig in and learn from and, and took some of their concepts and practices and principles? So I'd say at first, I mean, I just started reading all the old school guys books. Like uh, I kind of started with, uh, you know, Jack Nicholas and Ben Hogan books and Arnold Palmer, I, those old school books. That's kind of where I started. And then I started kind of graduating up to learning a little bit more about physics and the torques and the, the golf science stuff, nerding out on that. Um, Tyler Farrell, um, he, he's probably my, my biggest influence. Um, you know, he talks a lot about the anatomy and understanding what the, you know, all of these movements, internal, external rotation, supination, pronation, you know, ulnar deviation, radial deviation. So understanding kind of the, uh, the body. Um, and then, I started really getting into kind of the kinetics, learning about the kinetics of, you know, moving an object. So Michael Jacobs uh, puts out some really interesting stuff that I'm always trying to kind of, it just hurts your brain to try and figure out. And so I'm always kind of, you know, kind of ask questions and that, but that uh, kind of the physics, that open kind of learning about the moment arms and the torques and the force and all that stuff. Um, it just opened up this whole world of, of kind of how you interpret, how you can interpret a golf swing and what to look for and um and yeah i don't even know <laughs> kind of lost my train of thought there. i don't even know what i started talking about but it's it's all just it's just so much fun to uh all the the ways that we can now measure stuff and you know looking at the ground reaction forces it just you're able to i guess i kind of started with this very you know you hear one person say something and then that someone else contradicts it and you know th another pro will say i don't do that i do this and there were just so many contradictions so that's when i I just started looking deeper and deeper and deeper for um, more answers and more ways of thinking about solving different problems. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's a it's a cool time to to be learning about this stuff. I don't know that the the average golfer really realizes how much you know, guys like you and, and a lot of the coaches that we see that are working with the best, like how much research and study they do on those kind of things, the biomechanics, the vector forces, you know, all the, the torque and stuff. I'm in, um, I don't know if you're in this group, but it's the, I think, golf biomechanist um, on Facebook yep. from Nick, Nick, you know, Nick Chertok. He's, he's awesome. He's um, and I'm just, yeah. I'm just a fly on the wall in there. I'm just always just kind of watching and reading. And I'm like, I, you know, it feels like you need a physics degree to be reading through some of that stuff. And it's, 
overwhelming. And I don't think that the average Joe, and, and not that they need to know or, or think about that stuff, but I don't think they realize kind of the detail and depth that you guys go into you. You're probably not. Yeah. And that's a, you know, it's probably a good thing um, because try, I mean, trying to play golf, thinking about that stuff is, uh, you know, for the average golfer, just be an absolute nightmare. Right. So separating, I, I try and separate those two things as much as I can and use, you know, just s simple language and just keep things as simple as possible. Um, but I like to take a lot of those, um, or I should say, Lots of my information, you know, stems from lots and lots and lots of research and lots of thinking about it and saying, okay, well, how, how can I apply this, this concept? And um, so, yeah, so th there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes for sure. Regarding the, you know, you mentioned going down different rabbit holes and trying new things, which is not great for a golfer to do when he's working on his game. But you as a coach, sure. um, you know, that's something that you have to, that we all kind of have to, to look at. And we're taking in so much information from, you know, people that we read and things like that. What were some of the, were there any things that, that you struggled with? Or what was that process like kind of going through and kind of really finding your voice when it comes to some of the different things? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so my goal kind of when starting this whole thing was I wanted to change the way my golf swing looked, you know, that was, I didn't care about my score at all. Like, you know, you see golf swings on, on TV and you, you know, you I just wanted to feel what it felt like just cause I thought it was such a, you know, such a beautiful thing watching, you know, like Adam Scott swing and all these guys. And I was looking at my swing and saying, okay, my golf swing doesn't look anything <laughs> like theirs. It's, you know, it's somewhat functional. I, you know, I was at the time built, obviously more like a hockey player. So lifting heavier weights and being bulkier. And, um, and so I essentially had to kind of teach myself how to move like a golfer. And, and so that process of changing the way my swing looked, it was all, you know, it took me a couple of years to figure out that if you want to change a movement, the feedback has to be the movement. I mean, you can't care what the ball is doing. You can't care about the outcome. You got to focus on, on the movement. And that just means filming yourself over and over and over and over and over again. And, uh, you know, you think you have it, you don't, you think you have it, you don't. And then, you know, two years later, you might start to just have it. Uh, it took me, it took me a long time to figure out, um, you know, how long of a process it really is, um, changing a movement pattern. It, and, you know, at the same time, the, the, the funny part is it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to hit better golf shots. Uh, it, for a lot of golfers, it's, you know, it, it's kind of the opposite where you start changing the way a swing looks and you'll just start to, you'll start to see some really bad golf shots for a really long time and kind of crawling out of that hole. Well, I think you do, sh you do end up, you know, with a better movement and, and a better mover and a better golfer, but it just takes so much time and so many reps and so much effort and so much feedback. That was definitely the biggest, um, kind of eye opening kind of things that, um, it just took me a long time to figure out, I guess, just the amount of time and how difficult it was. So essentially, you know, I set out to make my swing look different. And I'd say six, five, six years later, kind of six, five, six years into the process, I was actually able to see that swing show up, not just on the driving range, but I'd see, you know, a shot or two when I film myself on the golf course, I try and film myself as much as I can when I play, I started to see that swing show up and actual functional shots, you know, leading up to that. I wasn't feeling myself on the golf course at all. And, you know, it, it was so funny. I, I wasn't seeing there was, I was, the swing was showing up on the range. Um, it was, uh, and I'd go play and I'd play like shit. And I couldn't figure it out. And I was like, what, you know, what's going on? So I was like, finally, I was like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to film myself on the golf course. And that first swing that I filmed, this is like, you know, six years into the process. Like my swing literally looked like it did when I started. Like it didn't look any different. I was like, yeah. oh my God, like what? So, you know, this, it, the swing was in there, so to speak, but it just needed, it needed a hundred times more exaggeration, even from the range to the course. And so the kind of the, the interesting part of that is, you know, it only took me maybe three, four months to, to start really starting to, to see the, 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 that new swing, so to speak, show up. Um, it was in there, but to get it that, like that last extra step, because on the golf course, it's just, it's still, every time you change environments, you're going to regress. You may regress even more than you think. And so, then I switched from, you know, just kind of obsessing over the swing on the driving range. Now it was like all of my practice was done on the golf course. Every, every, I was filming every single swing and it didn't, I still didn't really give a shit where the ball went. I was still, I, I wanted the swing to look a certain way. And, and then the, the, the two things after just, you know, repping, 
rep after rep after rep after rep, the functional shots kind of started to show up. And that's when I started to um, kind of the, I guess the kind of what I set out to do, I, I could kind of see it. And I'd say that that process, obviously it's never ending, but I'd say to see that, that one swing that I, that I kind of, that I had on the golf course probably took eight years. You know what I mean? And thousands and thousands, and thousands of awful golf shots. Let me jump in and take a second here to thank our sponsors and friends over at Link Soul. And I want to highlight my favorite new piece of apparel, which I literally just got in the mail today. It is the waffle hoodie, which if you're watching on YouTube or you can see this video on the website, it is the tour logo waffle hoodie, which was part of the Bubba Watson collection. A couple weeks ago, several weeks ago, there was a big announcement that Bubba is now one of the official Link Soldiers and is wearing and partnered up with Link Soul. And they did a kind of a cool thing where they had a pack of different favorites that Bubba had, and the waffle hoodie was one of them. And I finally just got it in the mail. It's super light, it's super comfortable, but it's casual. And again, you're able to wear it on the course and you're able to wear it out on the town wherever you want. Now, I've been saying for a while, you have to go over to Link Soul and get on their email list. And I'm saying this because if you're not on their email list, you just missed out over the last 24 hours. They always do incredible deals. They always have incredible things going on over there that they let the people on the email list see it first. And so what they did yesterday was they put 50% off of, I think it was everything on the website. I'm not 100% sure it was everything, but if not, it was 95% of all of their apparel and all of their their goods. Their goods. Um, so if you aren't on their email list, you should probably get on there so the next time they do something like that, you have a chance to see it before all the items start to get taken up. Because I know I went on there, ordered a, a few things, and several of the items that I was looking at were already snatched up because people had gotten on before me. So be sure to go over to 18strong.com slash linksoul. You can get 20% off all the time on any of their stuff with our code. You'll see the code on that page. We change it up every month. So 18strong.com slash Link Soul, but be sure to get on their email list too so you get first crack at all their other deals. All right, let's get back to this episode with Jake. Well, let me ask you this. Why why was the look of your swing such a big deal to you? And for for now students that are coming to see you, at what point is it the 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 model of that swing that you're you're trying to get them to to look a certain way versus you know, because not everybody's going to put six years into their golf swing, right? Totally. Um, and totally. and a lot of guys just, I just want to score. I just want to hit and play better shots. So first of all, why was the, the look of it so important? Because I, I like the, I want to dig into moving like a golfer versus moving like a hockey player. Sure. In a bit. So I'll let you go. Expand. Yeah, I mean, for that was just my motivation. I was just so fascinated by just the look of of the golf swing. They just looked so. Well, I, I couldn't. Yeah, I can't even really explain it. It was just like a work of art and i was like i want to move like that well what did yours look like beforehand that that you didn't like so it was there it was just kind of this like you know i guess the classic hockey hockey swing right super short backswing like not a very smooth transition um it didn't you know it just didn't it didn't look all that smooth my path was probably everything was just a big pole cut where i just you know swing left because my shoulder was so tight Right. Um, I couldn't externally rotate the trail arm. So I was just swinging left, um, you know, that classic kind of over the top look, but I, you know, had good hands and so I could control the club face and um, irons didn't go that far just because I was hitting so down on it. And the face to path was probably, you know, the ball was curving, you know, 30 yards every time, but I just played it. Yeah. Knew, I knew what it was going to do. And I, I, I could, you know, I could play some pretty good golf. Um, and you know, I knew the the experience would be valuable in terms of coaching, just going down that that road, just to personally go through the process myself, so I could you know help educate students. Like, okay, like if you want to do this, this is what it takes. I I've done it. I've been there. There are plenty of disadvantages, um, you know, to going down that road. There's no guarantee changing a movement changes an outcome at the end of the day. Too, the human body and movement is just so endlessly complex that you know there really is no answer. Um, it, 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 there's just so much that has to do with motivation and your your brain and you know how how much you practice and it, so it's 
you know, from the from the coaching side, just you know, getting to know a student, you really never ha actually have the answer. Obviously, you, 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 the more reps you get in, like I'm still, you know, there are people that have been doing it ten times longer than I have, and so the, the more reps that I get, and the more I see, and the the more research I do, obviously, I'll be able to make better and better and better decisions as I learn more and get better at what I do. But I still think uh, it's it's just yeah, it, I'm still trying to figure it out. So. Um, uh, I would say, I would say 99% of golfers just focusing on the simple things. Like I use foot spray, you know, external cues, hit the, hit the toe, hit the heel, hit high, hit low and letting the body self organize the movements is the fastest way to, to start seeing some noticeable, meaningful changes in ball flight. Cause at the end of the day, that's all we're after. Um, but there's still things like the, you know, the, your hand path and the hub path and like your hands make the circle and the circles radius can be, so there's all of these, and this is stuff that I'm, I'm, I'm saying right now, the, the Michael Jacobs stuff that, that are endlessly complex. Um, but, uh, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Yeah. That it's, uh, I'm still learning. <laughs> I'll put it that way. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious, um, as far as your own transition, you know, you mentioned being a hockey player, obviously there's physical attributes that you guys have from all the training that you do, the skating you do, and just the nature of, of the sport. What were some of the physical things that you kind of had to change about your body, if if any? And did that was that more of like a physical training? Was that more golf practice? Where did where was the line there? Yeah, so I, I spent a lot of time just standing in front of, of a mirror and using a phone or an iPad and, and just slowing things down, definitely lifting less. Because all my, essentially, I, Looking back on it, I, I wasn't a very good mover playing hockey either. I, I'd never spent enough time just focusing on movement itself. If, if I would have approached hockey the way I do golf, I, I, I would have been a much better player. But just kind of moving just like a golfer, like there's, you know, there's lots of exercises you can do that um, that are when you look at, you know, golf fitness and all of those are great. But at the end of the day, just watching yourself and paying really close attention to just the the small things, uh, I, I guess, and everyone will pick, kind of will pick up different things. But it's like when you tell a kid, like, like copy something, like they just they just watch someone and they just watch and 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 watch. And if they're exposed to it a lot, they start to figure it out and they start to move like someone. So, I, a lot of my teaching, I'll just you know I'll send a picture of my swing and I'll ask, what do you see? Try and copy that. You know, send me ten videos of you just trying to copy me. You know, making a backswing or whatever it is. And, I'm not going to tell you how to do it. Just do your best. And then I'll kind of point out some differences. And then we go back and forth and back and forth. And, um, so just, you know, a lot of imitation, uh, and, um, I would say, yeah, I, 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 I tried to, I would say definitely less heavy weights. I was just too stiff. I wasn't kind of, I was always showing up that you, after you lift a lot, obviously you show up and you're really stiff and you can't move. There's no fluidity in anything. So it was kind of, lifting a little bit less or breaking it up more and, and just becoming a little bit more flexible, less bulky, um, learning how to just kind of relax and be soft in the arms, a little stiffer in the core. And, um, I guess, yeah, that's, well, I think you said it, you said it really well, like just being a better mover, right? Like, and I, I feel like I have kind of the same regrets with my soccer career as far as like, there just wasn't any good training in you know what we were doing when I was playing high school soccer, college soccer. It wasn't about learning how to move well. It was go run a lot, and you know like we didn't even really do any lower body strength training because it was like no, you guys run a lot, you're, so your legs are strong. You kick a ball, so your legs are strong, right? It was like it, totally different than than the mentality now. It's like no, the, if you're moving well. Your whole body, your legs, your hips, your torso, all that stuff, you get strong, functionally strong, and then do the things that you're talking about. I, I love the idea of like a kid watching a baseball player and mimicking the guy's batting stance, you know, like and, and mimicking their swing, not having to get super technical and, and tell them what their elbow is doing, but like just let them watch the guy swing or like you as the instructor, like here, do this, mimic this, and then you try to do it and, and let your body organize it and figure it out. I think that's that's a huge piece. I was just reading something about the mirror neurons in our, in our brain and how us just watching something, we start to attribute it to our ourselves and our body kind of starts to figure that stuff out. And it's fascinating. I think that you're right on the money there with the, the imitation 
of the golf swing, just like a little kid watching somebody else play sports, right? Well, it's like if you ever find yourself standing behind or uh, or kind of within eyeshot of a, of a really good golfer, you know, on the driving range, you you can see that he, he's, you spot that golfer a mile away, and you start to hit it a little bit better, right? You're, you're kind of looking up and you're saying, you know, your tempo automatically gets better and everything. So I think, I mean, just the power of that is, uh, you know, playing golf with good golfers, being around good golfers. Um, that's always, that's something that, you know, I was lucky enough, a lot of, um, my friends are, are really good golfers and I, you know, they were way better than me. And so me just walking around with them, asking questions, uh, watching them hit shots was super valuable for me. Um, and then I always try and go out and watch as much golf as possible in person. I think it's just so, it's such a powerful experience being, um, up close to those guys hitting shots and, and just seeing what it looks like watching their ball flight. Can't see it on TV, but when you're there, like you just absorb so much. So, I mean, that's one thing that I always try and tell, um, my players or people just go out and watch good players as much as you can just absorb it and just like be fascinated by it because it's just it's so awesome to watch have you ever met or or heard of a guy named uh sean hutchinson we had him on the show a long time ago he was an olympic swimming coach and he had an app and he was actually doing a lot of stuff with golf i haven't talked to sean in a while but it all it was basically an app where you could go on youtube and find a clip of your favorite golfer or like we could go and find a, a clip of your swing and you load it into this app and it loops it over and over and over and you put on the these vr goggles and you watch it oh and it God. has like these auditory tones to it and he used to use it with his um olympic swimmers and it because i didn't realize this but swimming is just if not more technical than the golf swing and so they would just basically watch you know kind of like michael phelps watch the videotapes yep. and they would watch it and then they would go do it and I'd used it with a couple of clients of mine years ago and it was nuts. Like without telling them to do anything, they'd watch and then they would do like some slow motion swings with their eyes closed. And it's crazy the power that our brain has to send those signals without really even, you know, like internally trying to do specific things. I, I can't remember the name of the app. I'm going to look that up and put that that's in the show notes. So. Sick. That's so awesome. Yeah. I mean, that, that's so incredibly powerful. Um, yeah. Sean, Sean Hutchinson. Sean Hutchinson, and I think it's it was like Copy Me Golf or something. I'll, I'll put that in the show notes. All right, I want I want to talk about um, your the way that you're relaying your information because it's so unique. You know, when I watch your Instagram videos, the editing that you do, the music that you do, you have so much fun with it. You make it fun for for people to watch. And like I literally was scrolling through laughing showing showing my son some of your videos uh and he he digs it and so tell me like how did that start i, I assume you have a, a bit of a music background or you just love dabbling in that stuff yeah so i mean i i grew up producing music making music me and you know my friends we'd all we'd make funny raps growing up and i just kind of kept with it and just loved doing it love producing um like i my first uh Recording interface. It was a you know that ta a Tascam 424 tape deck, and I'd sit in the you know in the garage and play all the instruments. My both my parents were musicians, and so I grew up you know learning how to play piano, guitar, just always playing around with instruments, always learn. I mean, I just love learning. I think that's kind of just something I, I I've learned as I've gotten older that I just love learning how to do new shit and just like the process. Everything about it just fascinates me. So, music when I was when I was younger it was music and hockey. I was always kind of battling between spending my time doing both and kind of music getting in the way of hockey and and vice versa but it was always there and essentially i i got my my class a um and i you know i was thinking was like i have to start making content like it's you know i gotta start putting my stuff out there i've got to i gotta figure out how uh you know how to get my name out there and so um I got an iPad and just started, I knew nothing about video editing. All, all my background was kind of more in music. And so I got an iPad, started learning how to do that. And, you know, I was, I was posting stuff, uh, in the back of Stanford range. Essentially, I remember the first day, uh, the first day, I, I guess, recording or filming myself, I was just blabbering, like mumbling over my own words. Like I realized I was a horrible communicator. Um, I, and, and uh, 
filming myself just like the golf swing. I was watching it back and just being like, wow, like, you literally don't know how to talk. So <laughs> that, that needs work too. So I mean, I would just spend hours in the back of the range like between lessons, any chance I could. I just put the video uh, or put the phone, put the phone down, press record and, and just, you know, kind of just start talking and trying to figure out how to, how to talk. Then I started essentially, so at the time, Instagram was, well, you could only make minute long videos. Right. And, and so for whatever reason, I kind of gravitated more towards Instagram, mainly because on YouTube, I, you know, I'd have to sift through these like 40 minute long videos. I just hated, uh, I thought they were all just, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to put anyone's work down, but I just, there was just so much, uh, to get like, you know, a nugget, it would take me 10 minutes of just like fast forwarding. It's like, I don't need this. I don't need this. This is fluff, fluff, fluff. So I was like, okay, so my goal essentially is to take out every bit of fluff possible and just condense it into the simplest, shortest golf tip, po you know, ever. I want mine to be, you know, anywhere from, well, just under a minute, right? So yeah. that was a much bigger task than I thought. It just, it's, I started re rehearsing lines, like, you know, in the shower, just how am I going to word that? How am I going to take away every, every, every unneeded word? but still kind of have it, you know, flow and, and just not be something boring. And so to me, I kind of, in my head, I kind of thought of each tip as kind of like a little pop song, right? Where it's, uh, it's, it's catchy. There's, there's nothing there that doesn't need to be. And then that just kind of slowly evolved into, well, I remember hum, you know, I was like, okay, well, let's put some music at the end of one of these videos. Cause you know, the, without the music, it was just kind of bland. I'm just standing there talking I'm like this kind of sucks. So, uh, I just started humming. I was like, I want to play some G with my friends. They want to buy me because they suck. All right, cool. So I just recorded that vocal line and then put a beat over it. I put it at the end of, of uh, you know, the tip. I was like, you, know, you want more shuffling or whatever? Do this. All right, cool. Put it all together. You get period and then that click thing happened. I don't know where that came from, but there was kind of like a, a flow started kind of evolving from it. And it was kind of, there was like a beginning, middle and an end. Um, and that eventually evolved into now uh, as I've gotten, you know, more equipment and better at what I do. And um, now it's kind of like the song will have, the song is coordinated with the message, right? So like if I can, someone said something like, you got the tips stuck in my head, now I don't need to think about it. And I was like, oh, well, that's awesome. Like if I can just get this, this tip that has to do with golf, that's also kind of funny and also doesn't sound like shit, that's you know so somewhat listenable. Like that's kind of a cool thing. If you it, getting these tips stuck in people's heads so that they don't have to think about it, it's just like there. Um, and and so yeah, so now you know the, the the humor part. I've always just loved messing around and so try you know throwing in some f bombs here and there and just making it funny is just I, I it just it's just been uh, such a fun process and and uh, I'm still working on you know getting making them better. I guess so. Yeah, I mean a lot of fun. the I can't remember what the first one was that I saw. I was like, man, that was, that's pretty awesome. I, I like the, I like his outro or I like his song. And then I went to the next one. I was like, wait, that's, he's actually singing the tip like that. He's, <laughs> it's, I'm like, that's, that's freaking great. And then, you know, it, it kind of moves along with the, with the different things that you're doing. I was like, that's brilliant. And then I just kind of kept scrolling through and sc scrolling through. How much time do you spend Teaching versus like editing and all that stuff, because that's got to take a, a a ton of your time, right? Yeah. So I mean, I've got I've got so much stuff now. Kind of, I've, I've made so many songs, and, and I've got so much footage of of so many different things. I can kind of cut and copy and paste from different things, and I have different ideas. Some videos take longer than others. Some take a really long time, like that the one I did on swing direction versus club path, where I'm holding this pot tilted yeah. inside, and that one probably took me like. 30 hours to do, uh, <laughs> over the course, or over the course of a few days. Uh, some of them, yeah, some of them are, 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 are quicker. Um, but, uh, right now I would say, I'd say I'm probably putting out more content than I am teaching. I'm a lot of my efforts now are, are starting this new company, drive box yeah. driving range and creating content for, for that, but also just, all the, the, the business things that are involved with it. Um, and then doing some teaching out of it as well with COVID, obviously we were a little bit care, you know, more careful about that because uh, it is kind of an enclosed ordeal and that's, I'm not teaching out of any facility anywhere. It's just out of the, uh, out of the drive box. So um, yeah, I'd say, tw you know, 25% teaching, maybe 75% content. And I do a ton of online coaching um, as well. So 
it varies week to week as well. It depends on, on who's booking and, and all that. So, um, where's, where's the best place for people to go follow you before I, before I forget to ask you that. I, I would say Instagram, Instagram, Jay Cut golf, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. Um, all just Jay cut golf. Cool. And, and, and then Jay cut golf, dot com. If you, and that's where website. they can they can do your uh, online lessons and stuff like that at jcutgolf.com, right? Yep, yep. I, all all the links are up. I mean, all the links are up on uh, on on the Instagram bio page as well. There's there's that link tree. But yeah, jcutgolf.com has everything. Links to everything. Um, I I go through Skillist, the app Skillist, for all my online lessons, and then I also do Zoom lessons too. So that's all through jcutgolf.com. Cool. All right, guys. So everybody that's listening, uh, we're going to talk about Drybox here in a second. But I want you to go follow at J cut golf on Instagram, go check out what we're talking about. I, I guarantee you have never seen content like this in the golf instruction <laughs> world. Um, if you like enjoying yourself, if you like, you know, kind of a little bit more laid back approach to, to golf, which I know is a big thing. You know, I heard you guys talking on your, on your podcast and one of your parts of your mission is like to, to make golf, golf a little less stuffy, which I, I'd love that part. Um, totally. I, I think golf needs a lot more of that. Don't you? Oh, totally. I think it's trending in the right direction. There's so many people just having so much fun with it. And, uh, you know, I think the, the, the bad golf shot is now being celebrated. The shank, the, yeah. you know, your buddy hammered, stumbling over himself, missing. Uh, I was watching a clip <laughs> the other day. The guy was like, had his driver and he like literally, he, he like swung and missed and he like rolled down the hill and everyone's laughing at him. It's just, it's, uh, it's just such a, I think people are just fig, you know, COVID taught everyone. It's like golf is awesome. Like you can go out yeah. with all your friends, you can go out with, someone who's 40 years older than you, what 40 years younger than you, whatever, go out, have some drinks, compete, have fun, laugh. It's just, it covers all the bases. You hit a couple of good shots and you're just jacked. You know, all it takes is, is one good shot. You get a shot of that dopamine and you're just like, give me more. Yeah. It's not the, the old school, you know, when I was growing up, I, I didn't really play golf at all growing up. And it was always kind of the, you know, the Caddyshack, the Bushwood country club kind of a thought until I was yep. really introduced to what the game was. And I was like, Whoa, this is, this is freaking awesome. I wish I would have played this as a kid. And I think you're right. COVID brought that out for a lot of people that didn't, it was the only thing they could do or one of the only things they could do. And so they were like, Oh wait, this is, this isn't a nerdy stuffy sport. This is actually fun and competition and you can have a good time with your buddies. Oh my God. Yeah. It's, it's just the best. And, and it, I've met so many people who, who took it up, you know, within the last year and they, they're just absolutely obsessed with it. You know, whereas, you know, with, with the working from home now, everything has changed. So people are they're outside more. They're having fun. And it just uh, is awful as everything was, you know, I think for, for a lot of people, a, I don't, I don't want to say a blessing in disguise, but like it, it, you get this, this new skill and you're learning something new. It's just, it's, it's crazy. The, the, the doors that golf opens and the people that you meet and it's just, it's uh golf to me it's like it's like life's cheat code learn how to play golf learn how to get good golf and, and doors will open yeah it, it's so true it's so true so drive box i want you to tell us about drive box and is that something that kind of came was that happening before COVID hit or is that something that was kind of spawned out of this whole thing yeah so that's that's only i've, I've been doing that for about four four or five months so it's very new um kind of middle of COVID, i'd say um so tell people uh, yeah. tell people what it is, and and then obviously when you guys go on Instagram, you see Jake's stuff there. You'll also see you know his his link over to Drybox and to that yep. account too. But give us yeah. a background on it. So Drybox, it's a portable golf simulator essentially. Um, I think most people have probably been to you know what is it Five Iron Golf and, and the other ones. Uh, it's just it's that where we've got a track man. Just picture a big old truck where you can hop inside it. A uh, bunch of bunch of screens. Um, We've got a GC quad. We've got a track. We've got 10, 10 trucks being made. So the, the first prototype truck, uh, that's that's what we have now. It's, it's you know it's starting to kind of fall apart and, and, and this and that. And uh, but it's 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 awesome. And so you know our whole goal, our whole mission is to make golf more accessible. To, to get um, you know we want to do a bunch of work with inner city kids and, and places because you know, transferring kids you know from and I, I try to do this uh, a bit at Stanford too, trying to get programs where where you, you bus kids you know from wherever and it just it's just such a, a, a nightmare to do it just never ends up working out and so um essentially the to make a long story short this guy 
wanted to put a sim at his house, lived in San Francisco. You know, his wife was like, absolutely not. So he's like, okay, uh, well, can I make a, a truck that does this? And so started specking everything out, you know, in his garage, figuring out how high, what the truck would look like. Um, I want to say, you know, six, seven months of, of just messing around. I didn't know him at the time. This is just a quick story. His name's, and this ended up being, uh, he ended up finding me, you know, through Instagram. He took a lesson from me. Uh, and, uh, he comes to the lesson. He's like, you mind if we save 15 minutes for, uh, you know, I've got a, I've got a business idea. Would you mind if I, you know, pitch it to you? So gave a, gave him a lesson. He loved it. We were vibing. Um, and so he kind of sh- told me about the idea. Like I got this idea, drive box. I've got this, this trailer, this portable trailer. Um, and he just started taking up golf, you know, a little bit before COVID. So he was, he just became obsessed with it. You know, and he was like, I, I, I need to practice. I need it. So he, he, he kind of came up with the idea. He got everything, everything happening. And then he needed a golf guy. And so that's, uh, he pitched me the idea. You know, like, this is awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. I'd love to be, I'd love to be a part of it. Um, I went and saw the truck and, uh, we just started, you know, going to work and, and turned it, or I should say, yeah, it, it, it's now a company. Now we're, we're, we've got 10 trucks being manufactured. We've got the first one going out to New York. Um, we've got a team out there ready to take it. And then not sure where the other ones are going to go. There's a bit of a, uh, a delay with the manufacturing due to COVID and all this stuff. So, um, we're just trying to learn and figure it out. And yeah, I mean, make, make golf accessible, you know, teach people, uh, how to, get people in, you know, in front of a track man, educate them how to, how to use, you know, some of the new technology to, uh, to get better and all that fun stuff. So that's awesome. That's- I, I mean, I, I could see, you know, you guys doing parties, like taking it to different events, like, yep. man, it's just, when I saw it, I was like, this is brilliant. And especially with what's going on these days. And then, you know, I mean, even on a rainy day to be able to I think you said you can even like call up and get a drive, get the drive box. If it's, you know, it's going to rain, get the drive box and, and bring the sim over and have your buddies come over and play, you know? It, it, exactly. A hundred percent. And so that we've just been testing, you know, every, uh, every time we have a lesson, we, we've been driving it anywhere from uh, Mill Valley to San Francisco to San Jose. We've been giving lessons on the side of the streets, um, just parking it in all these, you know, kind of goofy spots. And it's just, it's so funny parking it and watching people, like turn the corner with their golf bags in a place where you'd never see someone walking with a golf bag. Um, it's just so funny. They all, you know, they pop in. It's always be like, what the heck is that? And we got like, on the side of it, they like, do you suck at golf? And yeah. That's what I love too. It's like, you can't miss that part. Right. <laughs> it's just so funny. Like people, people take pictures in front of it and, and you hear people walk by it and every, everyone just like, yep, that's me. Yep. That's me. It's just, it's so funny. Awesome. Well, I'm sure after this podcast, you might have some inquiries about, uh, you know, where some of those trucks can go from some of the people listening for sure. Totally. Might need to bring one of those over here to St. Louis for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I want to jump in and take a quick second to talk about our new partner, Live Pure. Now, I've been talking about them for the last couple of weeks, and we've talked about how important hydration is for you out on the golf course. And really, if you're out on the golf course and you're getting thirsty, that means that you're already dehydrated and you haven't prepared well enough. So what you can do with the Live Pure packets, they've got three different packets. They've got the hydrate, they've got the energy, and they've got the recovery. What I would suggest, and I actually got this from Dr. Troy Van Beesen, who works with some of the top level golfers in the world, works with, you know, major champions, works with the most recent players champion. And he told me that the best way to do it is before your round of golf, you need to make sure that you're hydrating. And so if you're using these three packets, you can take the hydrate before you go out onto the golf course. Drink it an hour ahead of time. Just sip on it through your warm-up or whatever you're doing on your way to the golf course. Then take one of the energy packets, put that in your water bottle for your round of golf. Maybe even have two of those where you can fill up and keep refilling while you're playing, while you're on the course, while you, when you, whenever you hit the, the halfway house. And then afterwards, you know, most of the time, a lot of us will stop, we'll have a beer or a cocktail on the patio or whatever it might be. But on your way home, have the recovery drink, put that in your water bottle and drink that on the way home. That way you're refreshed and ready to go. You feel great the rest of the night. You feel great the next morning, whatever it might be, especially if you're playing multiple days in a row. And guys, I'm telling you, if you ever go on a guy's golf trip, 
you know what goes on during those golf trips. You know that hydration is definitely an issue for for you over the course of those couple of days because the other stuff that you're putting in your body is definitely dehydrating you. So if you do these these three things, if you take these packets before the round, during the round, after the round, you're setting yourself up for that next day, not only to play great golf, but I'm going to guess that your head, your body, your brain, all of it might be working quite a bit better if you utilize those to really prepare yourself for the next round or really just for the next day. So go over to livepure.com, L-I-V-P-U-R.com. Check out all the different products. The flavors are incredible. I'm telling you, they taste like what I remember Kool-Aid tasting like. I haven't tried it in a while, but it tasted like that to me when I first tasted this stuff. So go over there livepure.com. Use the code 18 strong. You're going to get 15% off of everything in your order. And you're going to set yourself up for the next time you're on one of those long trips or just when you're going out and it's hot and humid and you're sweaty and you know you need to feel your body right. All right. Livepure.com. Use the code 18 strong. All right, man. Tell us a little bit about the podcast too, the Far From Par podcast. Um, It's you and I know you've got a co-host. Who's your co-host? Yep. So the co-host is uh, he's uh, anonymous for now. He's, okay. Uh, <laughs> yep. So he's got a uh, a great job in golf, and uh, I'd say some of the topics that we, some of the words that we we choose to to say, and it's just a little bit off the cuff, right? So that's kind of our, you know, we went into it kind of just let's just be ourselves, and if it's if it's raw, if it's a little gritty, then you know who cares? So yeah. For for his sake, he felt you know more comfortable keeping it anonymous, um, and uh, and yeah. So we just during COVID, you know, we I I, I think I was just you know sit, sitting around thinking of okay, well, I want to make a podcast. How do I make this awesome? And he's just it's an unbelievable like he just got that that radio voice. So you know, I, I hit him up and uh, we just we just started chatting and um, kind of just, you know, the whole goal, like for me, what golf taught me was just like, just get that first step out of the way, right? So you're like, all right, we're just going to record one episode. Let's just see what happens. We just have to do that first one. So we scheduled it and kind of went through the whole process of, you know, I had to learn how, how to even record one, how to use Zoom, how to get Zoom, you know, I had the microphones and all that stuff, but how to get it into GarageBand and how to edit it and how to, you know, making a song at the end and all that stuff that kind of went into it. And it was just kind of a, just like golf, you learn a little bit every day. The first one's probably going to suck, and you know, next one will be a little bit better. You just kind of, kind of go, and here we are. We've got, I think, close to twenty episodes. Um, I've had some awesome, you know, conversations with people, and and that's definitely one of my favorite things to do is just to connect with people. And you know, again, with COVID, just doing all these Zooms and, and podcasts, and I think people are connecting more so now than ever. And I mean, I've had so many awesome conversations with so many cool people and learned so much. Um, it's just really cool to, to get to, to talk to so many people. A lot yeah. Of- I mean, that's, the, that's the beauty of this thing. And again, you know, uh, as terrible as, as everything going on in the world has been with COVID, it's like, there are the bright spots, you know, there are the bright spots that have come about with the surge of golf and then people being more willing and, and apt to use a platform like we're using right now, you know, to be able to, yep. to meet people from across the world. It's, it's just been incredible. Who were some of the, the guests that you've had on any good stories of, uh, guests that you had on the show? Yeah. Oh man. Um, we had, uh, let's see here. Um, let's, I got to I'm kind of drawing a blank here. We, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'd say last week, um, last week we had uh, Dan Copen from the uh, from the Patriots on. Oh yeah, and uh, and so you know, listening to him talk about uh, Bryson DeChambeau, <laughs> Bryson, yep, Bry- Bryson, and uh, and Tom Brady, and you know, being coached by Bill Belichick, and just kind of the insights of you know from someone that actually played with them and and and, you know protecting tom Brady. like what was that like how intense was it what is you know playing in a super bowl like it's just so cool to hear uh someone just dive into it and just you know give you all the details what it felt like it's just so cool um and then we had yeah we had a uh another anonymous uh pitcher who's in the giant system he's kind of working his way up a huge golfer and so uh he was talking to us about how it's kind of similar in, in baseball uh, where, you know, you're kind of throwing close to, you know, 90, 100 pitches when you're out. And he's kind of in golf, like, you know, he's, he's shooting in the 90s and, you know, 100s. He's, 
it's like you're kind of you're throwing the same amount of shots as you are you know hitting hitting golf shots as he kind of went in and draw some really cool parallels about how he approaches each pitch and how similar it is to golf and the mindset um we had this uh we've had a couple pro hockey guys out there um we're having another chat with with two um i think next week which is going to be hilarious one a guy plays for the uh for the capitals and uh guy who played for the Bruins. So, I mean, it's just everyone's stories of um, one of the guys, he can't beat this like 70 year old member. He's like, he's always like, that's his goal is like beat this guy. He can never beat him. The guy just beats it down the middle, you know, 200 yards yep. and just outwits him every time. So like telling him telling stories about that is just, it's just, it's all such a trip. Um, what is it? What do you think it is with hockey players and golf? Because I find that so many hockey players, well, first of all, a lot of them are, are very good at golf, but they just love it too. Oh yeah, you can. It's it's easy to to go out and play golf and talk a lot of shit. That's definitely, you know, I think one of the best parts is going out and chirping your buddies and and obviously competing. Um, but I, I think it's also because it's just so different. Like you're when you're when you're you know you're in an ice rink, you're freezing. It's all white and cold, and I don't want to say miserable, but it's you know it's it can be painful. And golf is just like you're out in the sun. It's green. It's beautiful. It's like the opposite. Of, of your environment when you're playing unless you're playing outside in Canada somewhere right but uh I don't know maybe, maybe that's one of the reasons I, I always I mean you just you come your season ends and you're just pale you haven't seen the sun in you know seven months and <laughs> yeah. just, so you, the, the sun aspect too the vitamin d is uh yeah you got the you got those another, chalky another positive <laughs> chalky white legs out there in your golf yep. shorts walking down the yeah, fairway yep. But there is there, there's that uh, there's that competitive nature to you too, where it's like a totally different environment, but still that competitive piece where you want to beat your buddies, or yeah, you you want to beat Bob that you know pipes it you know 200 yards, like you said, right down the middle every time. We've all got the, that guy that we've played with. It's like I know I am a better athlete than this dude. I should be wiping the floor with him, but he sneaks he sneaks it by yep. me every single time. Yep, for sure. All right, my man. Let's finish up with some questions we'd like to ask everybody on the show here. So I think you know these are coming. So what is your favorite golf movie of all time? Favorite golf movie of all time? Uh, Happy Gilmore. I figured that was a pretty stock Stupid answer for a hockey player. Stock answer, but uh, I just I absolutely love that movie. I, I could still watch it every day. It, just, it pumps me up. I love it. Is there a, a book, and this doesn't have to be a golf book, but um, is there a book that was influential on you or a book that you like to recommend to people? I'd say one of the most influential ones for me was The Talent Code. Um, that kind of taught me how to learn and kind of what that process l- looks like. Um, just gives all these really cool parallels of, of learning other things. And, you know, it goes into talking about different hotbeds and, you know, soccer players in brazil and is why are why are great performers why are they great it's not overly long it's not overly complex that's that's definitely one of my favorite ones i always go back to and reread different sections it always definitely kind of opens my mind and yeah it's a killer read the talent code check it out what would your walk-up song be if you could pick one not a jay cut special but (laughs) (laughs) so this one i'm probably going to butcher the the pronunciation it's a uh it's a cover. This guy, Rogelio Martinez. So it's this, uh, it's this like Spanish version of a uh, what is it? A I don't I almost want to say a, a. It's not a Celine Dion song. It's a. <laughs> is it Faith Hill? It's uh, here. I'll, I'll 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 play it here. It's uh, I just I cannot get enough. And my buddy sent it to me. He's like, dude, this song is so fire. Um, <laughs> oh, let's see here. There we go. I got it pulled up here. Wait for it. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just picturing you strutting up in your salad bowl hat, you know? Yep. Awesome. Yep, exactly. That's the vibe right there. It would it would throw everyone off so much. (laughs) Like, what is going on? (laughs) So good. (laughs) <laughs> who would be in your dream foursome if you could pick three guys to golf with and this could be famous people past present anyone who who are the other three that fill out your foursome and where are you going to play i always wish i give this one more thought um 
but I mean, you know, the, the stock answer is you, you got to go Tiger, you got to go your dad, and then you got to go, uh, you got to go with one other guy. I, you know, I'd say John Daly. I, I, I'm, I'm a big Daly guy to see his mullet up close in person. Uh, I think that'd be a pretty badass foursome. All right, I'm going to ask you a separate foursome. Three celebrities that you would want to play golf with. I would say, let's go. Let's go, McConaughey. Let's Have you go. read his book? No, I haven't. Oh, it's so good. That's do the awesome. do the audio. Do the audio. Okay. Yeah. He, I, I'm assuming he's he's the one talking. He's the one doing it. He's oh god, he's so, he's his voice is it's like an angel. Uh, I go McConaughey, and then just for a wild card because he's so insane. Shia LaBeouf. Oh. I'm sure he would just do something completely insane. Um, and, uh, and then let's go, I don't know. Let's go, let's go Leo. All right. Solid, solid force in there. Where are you going to play with either group? We're going to go out and we're going to hit, uh, we're going to hit Cyprus. Perfect. All right. If there was one course that you could play, the only course you could play for the rest of your life, what is it? And the caveat is that you have to have played it before already. Cyprus. Nice. You played Cyprus? Yep. Oh, baby. Um, yeah. It's magical. That's that's what I've heard. Magical. All right. What what has you most excited right now, my man? You've got so many things going on. You've got Drivebox. You've got, you know, all the, the content you're putting out. Uh, what's what's next for you or what just has you all jazzed up right now? Yeah. I mean, the the opportunity to help grow the game, to help get kids – into the game who may have never had the chance to, to pick up a golf club, you know, through drive box that definitely has me most excited to start wheeling this thing around as COVID starts to hopefully, you know, kind of become more in our rearview mirror, rear view mirror and, and kind of start to, to wheel this thing around and just show kids, uh, get clubs in kids' hands. We've got some programs that we're trying to kind of roll out in different partnership so to speak but that that definitely has me most excited um growing the game and and uh just seeing seeing what we can do um with this with this portable uh range which is I'm, pretty cool i'm excited to see what happens with it when this fleet of dry box <laughs> trucks show up where they end up and all the all the social i mean that's gonna be some some sweet social media stuff right there that'll be fun all right man last last thing What's the best piece of golf advice that you've ever been given that you want to pass along to the 18 strong crew? Yeah. I would say, I don't know. I mean, I don't think anyone, I wouldn't say I've gotten any, any one piece of advice from anyone um, that, uh, that stood out. I mean, I, I've done most of, most of, of, of my research, I guess. I always wanted to kind of have more of my own voice. So I, I, I've kind of gone out and trying to, to do everything. I don't, you know, whether it's a good idea or a bad idea. Um, I, can't, I can't think of one thing that someone else, a piece of advice, but I think learning to, for your average golfer, you know, I would say learning to just hit the middle of the club face, as stupid as that sounds, with foot spray. Like if you can, if you can consistently find the middle, you're, you're, you're going to be able to play some, some really good golf. And it, it's, that's, not that difficult of a thing to do. A little bit of foot spray, spray the club face, get some feedback, learn to hit the middle of the face first, learn to do it really consistently, and then golf isn't, isn't that overly difficult once you can do that, I'd say. We're, we're all about keeping it simple here, man, and that's, yep. that's it. I mean, I, I love it. Just keep it simple, hit it right in the middle of the freaking club, Yeah. get good at that, and then yeah. it all comes around, right? 100%. Awesome. Jake? Thanks so much for coming on, man. I hope everybody, and I'm, I'm telling you guys, go check out Jake's stuff on Instagram. You're going to love it. Really, really love what you're doing. You bring such a fresh approach to the game. You're helping so many people. I see the, those Instagram numbers just climbing and climbing and climbing, and that, that means that people are really resonating with the way that you're putting it out there, and, and I love what you're doing. So thanks for coming on. Thanks so much for having me. This was an absolute blast. It was an honor being on here. <clears throat> um, I've seen a lot of your uh, a lot of your past guests. It's just yeah, it's, it's pretty trippy being on here. So thanks so much for having me, and uh, had an absolute blast. You got it, brother. <clears throat>
All right. Thanks for joining us this week on the 18 Strong Podcast. If you want any more information or any of the links to any of Jake's stuff, we'll have that all in the show notes over to 18strong.com. That's episode number 317. I do have two quick announcements. Uh, first one's just kind of a cool thing that's going on with 18 Strong. We've got our new HQ up and not not quite up and running, but it's it's getting close to being up and running. We are moving locations. Many of you heard about the issue that we had with the flood back in August, and it's been kind of a uh, nomadic journey over the past several months, but we finally will be in a new place. We're going to have a full-blown podcast studio. We're getting all that set up. We're going to have a sunken pit that is a uh, hitting bay. We're going to eventually have a launch monitor, everything. So we're going to be able to create a lot more content from this new space, from this new HQ. I was just in there yesterday. They just poured the concrete walls. We dug out the floor. It's going to be really cool. I can't wait for you guys to see it, but we're going to be doing a lot more stuff with the podcast too. Hopefully bringing in some in-person guests and uh, having a lot, lot more cool guests as we always do. But this time we'll be able to do some face-to-face stuff as the world hopefully gets back to a little bit of normalcy. Also, I want to mention that we are going to be doing a giveaway over the next couple of weeks, and and we'll probably end up doing this in a more more long-term fashion, but we are going going to be doing a giveaway where you can win 18 Strong Gear, you can win Link Soul stuff, Link Soul gift cards, and some of the other products from some of our other partners. And the way that I want you to do that is to, again, over on Instagram, follow at 18 Strong, Actually, it's 18strong underscore. Follow 18strong over there. But we want to see members of the 18strong crew. We want to see you guys wearing your 18strong gear. We want to see pictures of that. You can tag us. You can DM the pictures to us. When you're using the the hashtag I am 18 strong, we're going to be looking for those. So if you have a picture of you on the golf course, it doesn't have to be in 18 strong gear. We want to just see you guys out there living the lifestyle that we're preaching here and that you guys are all accustomed to. So on the golf course, in the gym, you know, just having fun out with the buddies, whatever it might be, hashtag I am 18 strong. And we're going to be picking some winners over the course of the next several weeks. And we're going to be doling out $100 gift cards over to Link Soul, 18 Strong Swag, memberships to the 18 Strong app, and a lot of different prizes from other partners there. So just wanted to mention that that is coming over the next couple of weeks. We'll be in, um, announcing that over the winners over on Instagram as well. All right, don't forget to go check out our partners over at Link Soul. You can get your 20% discount at 18strong.com slash Link Soul, where you can, again, get your hands on the waffle hoodie, the Tour Logo waffle hoodie, which I'm wearing right now, and check out LivePure, L-I-V-P-U-R.com for all of your hydration needs, energy needs, recovery needs on and off the golf course. Go to LivePure.com and use the code 18STRONG to get 15% off there. All right, guys, we'll catch up with you next week. I've got a really interesting and exciting guest next week. So remember... The stronger we are, the better we play. Talk to you soon.